Here's a quick demo of the Tailwind Merge Utility Library and why I think it's super useful. I have a contrived example here, but that's plenty enough to drive the point home. So I have a button. It's just a Next.js page that imports a button component and then renders it here. And in the components folder, I have this button component. And really all it does is return a button and we have a set of class names passed to it. Now let's say for some important reason, in one instance where you consume the button, you need, you must have the button have a peel shape with the rounded full class. So you really want to kind of override the default styles and pass a class name here and go rounded full. If I look at my button now, nothing has changed. You can see we still have the rounded LG class and no sign of the rounded full class that was passed to it. The reason that happens is in our button, you can see we have this rest props attribute here, which basically represents everything except the children props that we pass to the button and gets passed here. But then we redefine the class name attribute and therefore override it completely. The pattern of spreading the props before the class name attribute here means that you lock the ability for the user to override the default styles. And that might be something that you do absolutely intentionally. In that case, our user really, really wants to be able to override the styles. So let's move the rest props after the class name attribute and see what happens in that case. And whoops, our button doesn't look that great now. Our button does have the rounded full class, but we've completely overridden the default classes from the button and steamrolled over it with our rounded full class. That's definitely not what we wanted to do. We sort of wanted to merge the classes from the button with the class that we passed to it. And well, there's a way to do this. A common pattern you'll see is to create a JavaScript function. Let's call it merge classes. And you can see that Copilot knows exactly what I'm trying to do. It can receive an array of strings and then it will filter by truthy values and then join with a space. Effectively taking multiple groups of classes and then combining them together for us. So let's try that. In our button component, we need to receive the class name attribute and let's default it to an empty string. And I'll add it to the type here class name question mark to make it optional and set it as a string. And now we're going to use our merge classes function in the buttons class name attributes merge classes. And I'll close the function here. So we pass the component classes first, and then we will pass the class name attributes received from the consumer second. Now my button has all the default button styles applied, but also the rounded full class that I passed when consuming the button component. And it might look like everything's just fine, but there is a big and sneaky problem here. If we look at the classes applied to the button element, there is a rounded full class that we've passed to the button component, but there's also the rounded LG class from the default styles. And these two are technically applying a different value to the same CSS property. You can see them both here applying a border radius value. Right now, the rounded full wins because it's defined three lines later in the CSS, literally right after. And that's ultimately why rounded full wins here. Not because it's merged after the default classes in the React component, but because of the source order in the CSS. That's how the cascade works. Right now, rounded full was generated after rounded LG because we've reached for this class after when building our project and the just-in-time engine has added this class after the one that already existed. Now let's watch what happens if I restart my dev server to regenerate the CSS. I will stop the dev server and restart it with npm run dev. And now I will refresh the page. And whoops, we're back to rounded LG. Uh-oh. You can see this time the rounded LG class wins as it was defined after the rounded full class in the CSS. And so as much as possible, Tailwind tries to be super clever about the order in which it generates the CSS to avoid this sort of problems. But it's inevitable that you will face problems like this if you start applying conflicting classes to the same elements. Let's look at another example. So for the background color here, we have BG Emerald 600. And let's say that for my snowflake component here, I need the background to be blue. So BG Blue 600. And yep, the button has a blue background until I hover over it. This is sort of what we were expecting. And you sure understand that the reason is that the blue color is defined after the emerald color and therefore the blue wins. BG Blue comes last because we've just applied this class right now while we're in development mode. But I have a funny feeling that Tailwind orders the color classes by alphabetical order by default. So let's restart the server and see what happens. Once again, stop the server, restart it, refresh the site, and we're back to Emerald and blue is not applied. And sure enough, if I check the CSS, this time Emerald is generated after. 
So let's try instead of blue to have a color that starts after E. So I'll go BG purple 600 right there. Let's switch this to purple. Right now it's definitely gonna win because we've just generated that color and therefore it's after the emerald one. But if I restart the server, I feel like this one is going to stay purple, but I'm not sure actually, let's refresh. And yep, it is still purple. So my theory that the colors are generated by alphabetical order seems to stand. I'm actually not 100% sure, but it sure looks like it. Okay, this is not a knock on Tailwind CSS at all. It has literally no way to know in which order the colors should come to work in your specific scenario. Like I mentioned before, it's very clever about stuff like hover state, breakpoints to make sure that the overrides happen in a logical way. But when it comes to color, it just has to make a decision and output the colors that you use. To try and protect you against problems like this, the Tailwind IntelliSense is actually going to warn you when you use two conflicting classes. So BG red 500, and you can see that immediately it's squiggling it and saying BG red applies the same CSS property as BG purple. And once again, to be 200% clear, this is not the order in which the classes come that define what color the element will be. It is the CSS source order. We're getting a warning, but this will still work. I believe the red color will win because R comes after P in the alphabet. Yep. But it has nothing to do with the fact that red comes after purple in the class order. If I had it here, uh, exactly the same would happen. And actually you can see that the prettier class sorting plugin has put BG red back at the end to tell me that this is defined after in the CSS. But believe me, if I turn the plugin off and I had the red class here before like this, the same color would happen, red would still win. Now we get this warning here because we are applying two classes in the same class string, but we don't get the same warning here because we actually sneakily passing emerald and then purple here in the class name but the Tailwind IntelliSend extension is looking for strings. It doesn't see purple 600 background color here, so it cannot flag that it's going to conflict with that one. So ideally, we'd have a tool that prevents us from stepping on the rake and getting hit in the face right there. And this is exactly what Tailwind Merge is. So if we look at our merge classes function here that joins groups of classes together, this is a very basic and minimal implementation of one of the things that Tailwind Merge can do for you. You may have heard of utility libraries that do something like this slightly more advanced, something like class names or CLSX. Here I'm on the CLSX uh, GitHub repo and you can see that essentially it's going to do the same thing, merge groups of classes, but it works with objects, arrays, and can handle more complex scenarios. I already have it installed in this demo project. So at the top, I could import CLSX from CLSX and you can name this whatever you want, CN for class names. And then I could delete my merge classes function here. And instead of using merge classes, I could use CN. And you can see it's expecting also an array of class strings. So now if I save, the exact same thing happens. So we have our button default classes and then the classes we pass to the button component merge together, but we still have these conflicting classes of rounded LG and rounded full, and then BG purple and BG emerald. And you know what? Let me quickly switch back to BG blue 600 since purple wins anyway and restart my server once again so we can better demonstrate how Tailwind Merge is actually going to fix this problem. So now it's blue, but when I refresh, we should go back to emerald because blue is defined before. Yeah. All right, and now with this understanding out of the way, it's finally time to look at Tailwind Merge. Tailwind Merge works very similarly to CLSX outside of the fact that it has named exports, but the big, big difference is it's going to merge the classes without style conflicts. It will decide for you when there are conflicting classes that the one that was passed last will always win and the other will actually be removed and not part of the class list in the HTML element. For example, here we have p-5, p-2 and p-4 all of them conflict, but the last one passed is p-4, and so the only class that will be applied to the element is p-4. I also already have it installed on this project, but you can install it with npm install tailwind-merge. And once you've done that, let me start the server again. Let's go in the button component at the top, and instead of cn from clsx, we will import a named export from tailwind-merge. You will see that we have two functions available, twjoin and twmerge. So in situations where you want to just merge classes without doing any of the conflict resolution, you can use twjoin just like you would use CLSX. So here twjoin with the exact same syntax and everything still works, but we still once again have that duplication of conflicting properties. But now, 
and I know you've been waiting for this, let's try the TW merge function that will resolve the conflict for us. I will select both instances of TW join and use TW merge instead. Nothing else changes. And before I go back to the browser, you tell me what color and what border radius the button will have right now when I visit it. You got it? Let's check it out. Well done, congratulations, you had guessed blue background and rounded full border radius. You can see in the classes here that rounded LG or BG Emerald 600 is nowhere to be found. We have this one, but this is the active class, this is different. The conflicting classes that were passed first have been removed from the class list, which is fantastic. And this little detail right there is the core focus of Tailwind Merge, and it's incredibly useful, especially if you work in component libraries where you expect users to pass class names that should override the styles of the default components. Now, what do you think would happen if I pass the class name prop first in my TW Merge and then the button styles? Well, hopefully you understand now that because these classes are merged last, BG Emerald 600 and Rounded LG will now win over BG Blue 600 and Rounded Full. And yep, Emerald button with Rounded LG, and we cannot see BG Blue 600 or Rounded Full anywhere in the class list. Let's bring that back after the default classes. And remember how I mentioned that the BG Emerald 600 class was removed because it conflicts with BG Blue 600, but we still have the hover and active Emerald colors. The cool thing is Tailwind Merge works with every Tailwind features like state modifiers like hover or active, chained modifiers, arbitrary values, arbitrary properties, all of it. So here where we consume the button component, let's go hover BG pink 600 and active BG yellow 600. Not the greatest styles for states, but that should do the trick to show us that it works. On hover, the button is pink 600, and on active, it's yellow 600. And there are no conflicting classes in our elements. The colors that were applied by default have been replaced with the ones we passed after, and that is Tailwind Merge's superpower. All right, I highly encourage you to check out the docs. Like I mentioned, it supports modifiers, stacked modifiers, arbitrary values, arbitrary properties, arbitrary variants, works with important, postfix, pretty much anything that exists in Tailwind. And you can take it much further by passing specific configuration to change the behavior. There's a lot more to it, but in a nutshell, rather than teach you the library, I wanted to show you why this is a useful library and actually just make you aware that when you pass classes to overwrite style, sometimes it might look like it works, but you might hit some sneaky problems. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.